Hello and welcome to this episode of Trash to Track. In this episode we're going to be looking at a couple of triangle locos sent in to me by a friend of mine. Um, first off we're going to be looking at this Triangle Lord of the Isles loco. I do like the look of this loco. It is a very stylish design with its one big driving wheel. But unfortunately this one isn't in the uh, best of conditions running wise. Although cosmetically it seems to be immaculate. Apart from the tender top there which needs securing in place. The tender wheels all seem clean and the tender is relatively complete so that will require little work. This however I've been told doesn't run very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the body shell with this um, screw at the back here and then we'll give it a test on the old battery to see how it runs. Removing that one screw allows the chassis to be manipulated outwards and it unclips um, from two little clips in the front there. As I said, cosmetically the body shell doesn't look to be in too bad a condition, it just needs a dusting over. Nothing is loose and the dome is secure so we shouldn't be having to do much to uh, the body shell at all. Despite this model being probably 60 years old now, I do like the design. Now we've got the chassis on the track, we'll give it a quick battery test to see how it runs. And it's trying to go, although there's not much life there to be quite honest. As you'll notice, this isn't the standard X04 trying motor in this. This is actually a TT gauge um, mo model that was used in Triang's TT range in the 60s. I believe it's called an XT60 motor and I've not worked on one before so this will be a learning curve. First off I'm going to strip the loco down by removing that front pony wheel by undoing this small brass screw at the front here just to uh, get it out of the way. As much like the body shell and tender the front bogey just only needs a dust over there's no work needed for that at all. Now I've got the um, bogey removed I'm going to remove the chassis uh, keeper plate here just to release the wheels a bit to see what we're working with and to clean those pickup wires there is quite a lot of dirt buildup on the wheel tread so that will need uh, cleaning off as will that old staple there that appeared to be stuck to the magnet so God knows how many years that's been stuck to the bottom there now to remove the motor I just simply pull that uh, lead out there which provides power to one of the brushes and I undo the screw at the rear thinking that it will pull out however it seemed to be quite firmly wedged into the two slots in which the motor um, fits on this chassis and it wouldn't budge so I end up taking the screw off on the top now, the one you can just see in there not this one this one holds the wires to the chassis to allow pickup but this middle screw that I'm undoing now I thought this held the motor in place, but as you will see, once I undid that screw, the motor actually come apart in two pieces. Here you can see the motor actually separates and the armature comes out as well as the brush holdings with the remainder stuck in that groove that's in the chassis there. Gentle persuasion got this out and uh, I'll have to rebuild the motor. As I said, I've never worked on one of these motors before, so it's all a learning curve. The brushes for this motor are also specific to this model only and as you can see there that brush has got virtually no carbon left on it at all this is it's unbelievable that that motor turned over at all the amount of carbon on there is negligible so i don't know whether that's worn off or whether that was a factory error as the other brush appears to be um, in good condition so i'm going to give the armature and the commutator now a um, a good cleaning and i'm also going to then try and reassemble the motor one thing I will say about this motor is there are thrust bearings on each end of this motor in little holes and you must not lose these as they are impossible to replace. Going through my spares box of trying brushes I was amazed to find that I actually had one of these brushes spare so I've got no idea where that came from. But laying it down on the workbench you'll see the difference between the standard triang brush and the brushes for this XT60 motor. The standard brush there I'm just fishing out of the pot here and if I put them side by side you can see that the X04 motor brushes are slightly larger so they would not fit this motor. I had to go online and buy a few more spares of these brushes just in case any of these engines come uh, in for repair in the future. So to repair the commutator um, face I just give it a quick clean over with a fiberglass brush to remove some of the scoring that appears to be in the brass. And I believe this is made by that uh, brush that had no carbon left on it. 
And then once I've done it with the fiberglass pencil, I give it a polish up with a cotton but a methylated spirits as per usual. Once I'm satisfied that that's all clean, I used a shaved down toothpick and then clean all the gaps in the commutator faceplate there just to remove any carbon buildup. And there is quite a lot in this as these gaps on this motor are really quite deep. They are deeper than the ones on the XO4 motors. Once it's all been uh, done I give it a final polish there with the methylated spirits and the cotton bud and now it's time to start reassembling the motor. I also give the brushes a good clean up as one of them was coated in a thick layer of carbon deposits. Before turning my attention to refitting the motor, I'm actually going to give the chassis and wheels here a clean with this contact cleaner. This really is good stuff and removes all the built up uh, and dirt and grease and old lubrication from in the middle there. Once that's done, I give it a, um, a, the wheels a quick clean with this fiberglass pencil. Um, I do these rear wheels first as these are unpowered, so I give these a good scrubbing and then once the motor and that is all back in place, I will power the model and then clean the drive wheels using um, the power and a fiberglass pencil. Now as I said, now I'm going to try and refit this motor and those thrust bearings sit in that hole there. And the one out of that side did fall out and as you can see on the magnetic tray there, these are very tiny ball bearings. They're about 1.2mm across, so do not lose them. Before reassembly starts, I'm going to douse the felt pads there with some oil just to give it good lubrication over the coming years. And I do this on both ends as there's a felt pad on both ends of this motor. Don't go overboard with this, just soak the felt pad enough so that the oil soaks in and you can see it glistening in the light. I'm then going to replace this thrust bearing in the end there whilst attempting not to lose it. And I also put a tiny drop of oil on that as well because the end of the motor shaft revolves on that small ball bearing. So metal on metal really does require some form of lubrication. The magnet on this motor was extremely strong, so it didn't need any modification or remagnetizing. The motor and commutator there goes in one way, and then the other end of the motor shaft sits in the hole and they clip together with a small T-piece on the top there. Ensure that the motor spins freely and then I can refit the brushes and the screw that holds it all together. The spring for the brushes on this is also a very strange shape, so try not to lose any parts, as spares for these motors are extremely hard to come by. Testing it with the battery there, you can see that the motor is now running lovely. So I can start now by reassembling the chassis. And the first thing I'm going to do is apply some of the silicon grease onto the main cog there. And I'm also going to put some on the worm gear of the motor, just to ensure that it's correctly lubricated for when it goes back into service on my friend's layout. Once the grease is on, I just give it a small dousing of oil just to thin it down a little bit and help it spread through the drivetrain. The motor, as I said before, slides in two slots that are die cast into the chassis. It's a very tight fit on this model, but gentle persuasion pushes the motor back in place. And then I reattach the brass screw at the end and the motor's refitted, ready for testing. One of the reasons I did two locos in this one trash to track is that the rebuild of this Lord of the Isles took very little time at all and the video was only initially 10 minutes long so I just thought I'd bite the bullet and get both of the um, trying locos that were sent in by the same person done at the same time. The one thing I did find with this motor is this, this wire that connects the brass pad to the brush had worn over time and become quite unreliable and I believe this is because the brush had worn down to virtually nothing. So what I ended up doing was I ended up unsoldering that red wire from that small brass tag and I soldered that directly to the brush itself to provide a better contact for pickups onto the brush. It's okay because if anybody ever maintains this in the future it'll be quite simple to unsolder the wire. And like I said it proved a very uh, better reliable contact. And as you can see there just giving the battery test of the unpowered rear wheel everything seems to be in order. And as I said, here I am just soldering the wire directly to the brush plate there. You don't need to apply much heat here and do it gently as you don't want to melt any of the plastic parts on the motor that hold the brushes in place. Now that that's all done, I can give it a batch, final battery test and I'm going to clean all the wheels. I did clean the pickups and the backs of the wheels as well and all seems to be running quite nicely. The next job is to reattach the uh, front pony truck there and I'd left the screw in situ so I knew which one it was 
And again, as I've said before, do not over tighten your brass screws into the die cast chassis as you don't want to strip the threads or cross thread it as you could end up damaging the model. Now that that chassis has been rebuilt and it was relatively fast this time, I'm going to give the body shell a good dusting with a stiff old paintbrush just to remove any surface dust and then we'll reattach the body shell to the chassis. To reattach the body shell you have to first engage the two clips at the front there that go in the holes in the body shell and then gently push the whole chassis into the body shell and secure with the rear screw again. Again with the rear screw you don't want to over tighten this one as if you do over tighten it you will end up cracking that plastic that holds it in place. This plastic is over 60 years old so it is getting quite brittle now so you do need to work carefully. Once that's all done and in place I'm going to turn my attention to the tender top there and I'm going to reattach this coal load using my satin varnish method so that if anybody has to take this tender apart in the future it's an easy bond to break yet leaves no residual marks on the finished paintwork on the tender. By running some satin varnish around with a cocktail stick and then pushing it firmly home and leaving it to dry it proves to be a very solid and reliable join but as I said which is one which is easily broken should you need to dis dismantle the tender in a future date. Just ensuring there that all the pickups are in line with the wheels and they move with the lateral play of the wheels and then I'm going to give it a test with the controller and this Lord of the Isles model seems to be running quite nicely. Now that we've done that rebuild we're going to turn our attention to the second loco that was sent in by the same person, namely this tired looking Triang Britannia which has broken smoke deflectors. But one of the more unusual things with this is that when they sent it over to me was its tender. This model actually runs with a Hornby Dublo A4 tender which slots in the hole there. Something I've never quite seen before but hey if it works it works and it doesn't look too bad to be fair. It's not a, a standard class tender by any means but it works and it proves uh, a use for an otherwise unserviceable loco. Now I'm going to give the loco a quick battery test here and it does run but it could do with the service as it's very sluggish and it stops um, intermittently. You can see there that the smoke box is going to need to be repainted as well as it's lost a lot of its black paint over the years. To remove the body shell you simply unscrew one screw in the top and the whole thing lifts off to reveal an early form of trying smoke unit sat in there. Unfortunately I don't have any smoke oil anymore so I'm unable to test it at this time but I have told the person who's trained this is to give it a test when they get it back running on their layout. I will have to invest in some smoke oil for the, in the future if I get any Triang Locos with smoke units I can give them a good test. My dad had a smoke unit Jinty when I was a kid and it was one of the best looking engines we had running around puffing smoke out of its chimney. Now you've seen me do this before with an XO4 motor, just remove that rear screw and the brass, um, sorry the brush wire and the brass plate there and we can remove the motor. Again this motor looks to be in bad condition but when battery power is applied it spins quite nicely so all it is in need of is a general service and cleaner. The chassis looks covered in crud and old lubrication so we'll sort that out in a moment. Releasing the brushes there shows us that the um, commutator faceplate needs a good clean up and as usual it's cotton buds methylated spirits to remove most of the dirt, polished up with a fiberglass pencil and then the gaps in the armature plate are cleaned out with the same wooden cocktail stick as we use for Lord of the Isles. A lot of people won't use fiberglass pencils to clean armature plates because they worry it will scratch the brass but if you work slowly and gently I've never ever had a problem with it. If you use too much force on the brass then you will damage it and you may misshape it and ruin the entire motor. The chassis there is on that blue towel as I've given it a douse of the contact cleaner off camera. I've also now in a position to start rebuilding the motor now that everything's been cleaned and the brushes have had a cleaning and it's a case of sliding the brushes up to the spring and the spring holds it in place then we'll give it a battery test to make sure that it's all running nicely. Don't worry about the um, corrosion on the uh, coil plates there as it didn't seem to affect this X04 motor at all and it still runs lovely and strong. And again, this motor has got a very strong magnet, so I don't need to remagnetize this one either. Now that the chassis has uh, been cleaned, I'm just going to give it a quick wipe over with this toothbrush. Um, it's not my wife's toothbrush now, so apparently she's gone... Uh, every time I've gone to get the toothbrush from the bathroom, she's hidden it. 
can't understand why but uh, I will find it and I'll start using that again <laughs> I find out that this um, this piece of uh, wire here has actually come off this connector so what I'm going to do is I'm going to resolder that on as this actually allows the contact um, and pick up from the chassis live side to go to one of the brushes so it's a simple case of just soldering that back in place with the aid of the needle nose pliers to hold it in place again before we reassemble the chassis with the motor i'm going to use the silicon grease again on the main drive cog there um, inside the britannia and ensure that it's correctly lubricated as uh, the contact cleaner will remove any remaining lubrication that there was in there it looks like I used quite a lot of silicon on there, but I do end up uh, spreading it onto the worm gear as well. And after I've run it in on some rolling roads, there doesn't seem to be any excess splattering anywhere. So uh, we're all good on that count. The X04 motor there just clips into the chassis, into its uh, correct fixing. And I'm going to give this brass tag there a clean up with the fiberglass brush, just to ensure good connection between that and the, um, and the brush. I didn't solder the wire directly onto the brush in this one as there's more room in the body shell whereas in Lord of the Isles room was at a premium and I found that trying to fit that brass plate there stopped the body shell getting on. Giving it a quick battery test it is starting to run but the wheels need a good clean so we're going to address that issue in a moment. But Now I know that the wiring is correct we can move on to cleaning the wheels and all the crud and crap off the bottom of this model. Again using a um, cotton bud with meth so I clean all the pickups there um, there are two brass wipers that sit on the back of the Britannia wheels and once the most of the crap's been removed with the cotton bud and meth I give them a polish up with the fiberglass pencil just to give them a nice shine and ensure good conductivity while the motor base plate was uh, unscrewed I actually oil the axles as well and then we'll turn our attention as I said to cleaning the wheels there was no lubrication on these axles or bearings at all so it is important that you do lubricate this as metal on metal will wear relatively quickly especially if the loco sees a lot of use i also put a slight dab of oil there on that main uh, gear now to clean the wheels i'm going to connect the um, controller lead there to the die cast chassis and then the other end i'm going to put on the wheels and hand hold a brass brush to clean the wheels the crocodile clips are slightly out of shape and wouldn't hold the brass brush in place so I had to do this by hand. This removes a lot of the surface oxidisation however I will need to treat the wheels afterwards. As, as you will see this leaves a black residue on the wheels and it hasn't, although it's removed the oxidisation it hasn't cleaned the wheels thoroughly enough for me to let it run on a layout. As you'll see now by using a cotton bud and methylated spirits you can see the black um, residue that's coming off the uh, wheels. Using the um, crocodile clips on the to get the wheels to turn, you'll see here um, just how much black mess comes off these wheels. So although the brass brush looked like they'd shine the wheels up, it had actually left this black residue all over them, which would have spread to the layout and then eventually stopped most locos running. It really is disgusting. This is 40 or 50 years worth of build-up on the backs of these wheels. As you can see there with the state of that cotton bud, this really is a job that you can't skimp on. Otherwise, you're just going to spread the muck and the whole rebuild's going to be pointless as the loco will stop running again after a few hours. I also use the fiberglass pencil just to shine up the side rods here as there was some surface oxidisation and some old grease build upon these. And working gently, they shine up quite nicely. And then once I've shined them all up, I give each of the linkages and the screws a small uh, douse of oil and also the slide bar there just to aid in running in and running when it's going around the layout. Again metal on metal it prevents excess wear. The back, uh, the Britannia chassis I actually ran in on my backrest saddles for a while just to get it warm to see if there was any residue of smoke oil in that unit but alas there wasn't. But I'll have to see if it works when my friend uh, applies oil to it when it's back on her layout. You can see now that the chassis is running quite nicely. I'm going to turn my attention now to the pony truck and the rear truck and just give these a good dusting over and clean the wheels as there is quite a lot of um, carbon deposits on the wheels as they're plastic and plastic wheels do attract the muck more than the metal wheels do. I use a uh, cotton bud and meths yet again, my usual go to method and just give the wheels a thorough clean over before putting the pony truck and rear truck back onto the chassis. quite why I'm only using quarter turns to turn that screw in there is I can't remember 
There must have been a reason, <laughs> but it seems like a long convoluted way of doing it. So now that's all done, I'm going to turn my attention now to the uh, body shell. And the deflectors just come apart with the smoke box removed, they just slide out of place. And as I said earlier, these are both quite badly cracked. I give the body shell a good dusting with a stiff old paintbrush to remove all the dust. And then I'm going to set about repainting the front using some round match satin black and a flat brush. I just brush paint this as I didn't want to mask up the entire body and potentially pull off any of the old triangle lining, as the other paintwork on this is getting on for 50 years old maybe. So working steadily, I just give the front there an, a nice coat of satin black just to chit all the uh, scratches up. And I also give the front buffer beam another coat of black on, the, on top of the full plate below the smoke box door. Once that's set aside to dry, I'm going to look at fixing these um, deflectors. I'm going to use some plastic weld cement. So holding the deflector with my thumb forefinger, I just run a bead of plastic cement on the rear of the deflectors and capillary action will carry the glue into the crack and secure these together. Holding it for a little while afterwards lets the glue set and both deflectors are fixed, ready to reaffix to the model once the paint's dry. Once they're both sorted and dry, I'm going to turn my attention to the tender. As I mentioned, this is the incorrect tender for this model. This is a Hornby Dublo A4 tender. So I'll give it a good dust over with a stiff brush. And then it's, the, it's now when I realise that the wheels on this are absolutely filthy and are caked in a layer of um, carbon and track deposits. So using a small flat bladed screwdriver, I scrape off all the muck off each of the wheels and then polish the wheels up with the cotton bud and meths followed off by a go with a fiberglass pencil just to remove all of the crud so that it doesn't transfer back onto the track when it's running around the layout again. Now that the tender's done, you can see there how shiny the wheels have come up. That's all ready to go, that's sorted. Now the paint's all dry, it's a simple case of re slotting the deflectors into their corresponding holes on the chassis there. And I do the same on the other side. And then the smoke box door itself is fixed in place, again using some plastic weld cement. Seem to have some trouble getting that deflector in there. But at this angle you can see that I've also touched up the silver paint on the body sides. So this Britannia is starting to look nice now and all the worn paint has been replaced. I actually fixed the um, smoke box door in place with some satin varnish. I thought I'd use the plastic weld cement, but no, I used the satin varnish method on this and it holds it nice and secure, just in case you ever want to take the deflectors off in the future. I now refit the uh, body shell to the chassis by engaging the clips in the back there and lining the screw holes up and I replace that front screw with the small flat bladed screwdriver. I've said it before and I'll say it again, don't over tighten your screws on the models as you can damage the plastic especially with these older models where the plastic is getting on for 50 years old and is quite brittle. Putting the two back together on the track, just give it a quick battery test and it's running a lot better. So I'm pleased that we've fully serviced this Triang Britannia. It may not be the correct tender for this loco, but it doesn't look too bad sitting there with its A4 tender in matching BR green livery. I think it actually looks quite smart and suits this loco rather well. Because I did this uh, filming quite hurriedly, there is no turntable shots with these. So I'm going to leave you now with a few shots of the Britannia and Lord of the Isles running around my son's DC layout. If you've got an engine you'd like to see featured on Trash to Track, please email me on the email address on screen. And we'll sort out getting it sent over and possibly repaired and possibly feature in an upcoming episode of Trash to Track. Thanks again for looking. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.